Hi, I'm Nick Turner. I'm one of the founding partners of Television 4, and this is my story. There have been four pivotal moments in my life and my career. The first, when I was very, very young, seeing girls screaming at the Beatles, seeing footage of them arriving, I thought, well, that looks like a pretty good job. I want, I want to do that. But it really wasn't until the punk explosion in 76, when I was just a teenager, and I saw The Clash and The Sex Pistols and, and the guys from America, The Ramones and Patti Smith, I actually bought a second-hand drum kit for like 150 bucks or something and I joined a band the next day and I never looked back. I was in, in several bands, a band called the Barracudas, a band called Lords of the New Church and the Barracudas was very much sort of a, the Beach Boys meets the Ramones. We had our first hit when I was I think 20 years old. We were on Top of the Pops which is the biggest show in England. We were touring with the Stray Cats, we were touring with the Taurus who became the Eurythmics and it was a blur and it was over before it even started really. But it was at that point that um, Steve Bader, who was a singer of the, of the Dead Boys, approached me in, in London at a, at a show and said, I want to come and play. So I went to play with, with him, with, with Steve and with Brian James, who was from The Damned. And we formed really what was a punk rock supergroup. We were a band from that moment on. Our first show was in Paris. We made a couple of records. We toured the world. REM opened for us. We played with The Police, with the U2. We played with UB40. We played with all the, all the bands that were around the time. Here is a poster below for Lords of the New Church with a little band called Guns N' Roses opening for, for the Lords. So th this jacket was created for me by a guy called Lloyd Johnson um, who had a store called Johnson's in London and these are these are chicken bones. My mother actually cooked those bones. I wore that on stage and it's on the back of one of our records. At some point though there were issues in my band. There were some drug problems, there were some alcohol problems. It became painful and what started to excite me was the business side of, of music and so I, I decided to make the change. I decided to get into the business side. I'd moved to Hollywood and I worked with a guy called Miles Copeland who managed The Police and Sting. And so I started working with Sting, did a CD-ROM with him and put his music in a movie called uh, The Living Sea, one of the biggest IMAX movies of all time. It was around that time that I saw the internet for the first time, and it was probably mid-94. Realized instantly that this is where my future lay. One thing that was interesting was NASA was broadcasting from the space station into universities, images from the space station and the shuttle. And so I said to myself, well, hang on a second, if we had a camera and we put a band in front of a camera, we could broadcast that band around the world. And we did it. And it was the first time it had ever been done, first internet concert ever. Billboard magazine, November 94, which says internet gets its first live concert. Little did we know that this was really the beginning of everything that the internet's become now and I created a, a website called Rocktropolis, which is one of the first music websites. Rocktropolis was a virtual rock and roll city in cyberspace. The concept was, was to be a hub for everything to do with music. And you know, you'd have, a, you'd have Sting's Castle where you could find out everything about Sting, and you'd have all these different roads and, and buildings you could go into to get tour dates and to buy merchandise. Yahoo! Magazine did a piece on Rocktropolis, one of the first websites ever to get a five-star award. From there, I then developed that company. We made websites for other people. We sold that company to, uh, to a company called N2K. I then joined a company called Artist Direct, run by a guy called Mark Geiger, one of the biggest agents in the business. We signed about 125 of the world's biggest artists. Everyone from the Rolling Stones and Metallica and Eminem and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and the Beastie Boys. Here's a platinum record from, from Eminem, doing all of his e-commerce, his digital marketing, here connecting him with his fans. The founders eventually left and I kind of ran the day-to-day -day for a few more years and actually made the Artist Direct Network the second biggest mu music network after Yahoo Music. I, I went for a few years to work for a company called Live Nation, who are the biggest concert promoter in the world. I signed the Jonas Brothers. We worked with Jay-Z, we worked with a number of other major artists while I was there. After Live Nation, I went to go and work at a company called Vivo, which was just launching and did all the branding and marketing and programming for the launch of Vivo. After Vivo, um, I went to work for a company called Relativity Media. Relativity, one of the biggest movie companies. They'd made movies like Mamma Mia and 300, The Social Network and The Fighter. And my job was really to sort of oversee what we could do in the digital arena. What I was really trying to do there was create a digital studio where we could develop projects online and take them to TV and to movies. While I was there though, I saw what some of these YouTubers were doing, these YouTube video bloggers who out of their bedrooms were creating incredible communities. They were talented, hardworking, creative people, creating multiple videos videos, vlogging, talking to their audience. It was a whole different way of broadcasting and that got me very excited. We brought them in and whether it was a Phil DeFranco or a Shane Dawson, we talked to them about our movies. 
When I left Relativity, I knew I wanted to work with these people again. I wanted to be involved in the convergence of TV and the internet. I happened to meet John Cody just around that time, and he asked me if I was interested in getting involved with his company, and I said three words. So I said, I'm in. We're scratching the surface of where this is going, but this idea of creating these, these vertical, passion-based channels is the right idea for the future. Part of what I want to achieve with this company is to legitimize some of these YouTubers who are superstars within YouTube, but just don't get the recognition outside of YouTube. I was talking to iJustine the other day and asking, I said, well, so how many videos do you do a week? Thinking, you know, four or five. She does 25 videos a week. We have to think of this as a whole new avenue for broadcasting. And as we see the convergence of the internet and TV, you will see this, I think, this idea of, of talking to the audience and, and communicating with the audience, it'll be much more prevalent. It reminds me of, you know, being when I was in the band. You get up in the morning, you go, you go into a studio, you try and find a riff or a drum beat or something or a word that inspires a song and, and you know, by the end of the day you have a song. Television 14 is kind of like my, my new band. So all we have to do every day is come up with a new song.